this example, we're going to work with the signal x of t equals delta of t. So x of t is an impulse in time. And we are going to compute the Fourier transform of this signal x of t. So we're going to compute x of omega, the Fourier transform of x of t. So we'll start just by writing down the definition of the Fourier transform. That's what we've written here. x of omega, by definition, is the integral from minus infinity to infinity of x of t times e to the minus j omega t dt. This is just the definition of the Fourier transform. For this specific problem we're working, our time function is an impulse, so we can substitute in and replace x of t with delta of t. And then I'm going to rewrite that just a little bit differently. Instead of writing it as the product of delta t times e to the minus j omega t, I'll write it as e to the minus j omega t times delta of t. Because written in this form, this is a little bit more in the form that you typically see when they talk about the sifting property of the delta function. If you remember, the delta function or impulse function has a sifting property, and it says that if you integrate from minus infinity to infinity of some function times the impulse function, that you can evaluate that integral very easily just by evaluating the function at the location of the impulse. So even though this integral looks very complicated, it's very easy to evaluate. All we have to do is get the function, in this case e to the minus j omega t, and we just have to evaluate that at the time corresponding to the location of the delta function. So we're going to evaluate e to the minus j omega t at time wherever the delta function is located on the time axis. In this case, we are working with the function delta of t, so this impulse function is located at time t equals zero. So this simplifies to evaluating e to the minus j omega t at time equals zero. So if we replace t with zero, we get e to the zero, which is just equal to one. So we've just computed that if we have a time domain signal, x of t, delta of t, then by using the definition of the Fourier transform, we get x of omega equals one. So we have a new Fourier transform pair here. Impulses in time give us a constant, or an impulse in time gives us a constant in the frequency domain. So let's work this problem kind of the other way. Let's go ahead and work with the signal x of t equals a. So in the last problem, we had an impulse in time, and we got a constant, the number 1, in the frequency domain. Now let's start with a constant in time, just the number a, and let's compute the Fourier transform of this signal. So based on what we just worked, the fact that we got an impulse in time gave us a constant in frequency. We would guess in this problem that having a constant in time is going to give us some type of impulse in frequency because of the time frequency duality property that we see in linear systems and Fourier analysis all the time. So our guess is that x of omega is going to be some type of impulse function. But we need to go ahead and actually work that out rigorously mathematically. So let's start with the definition of the inverse Fourier transform. So the definition of the inverse Fourier transform says that x of t is equal to 1 over 2 pi, the integral from minus infinity to infinity, x of omega, where x of omega is the Fourier transform of x of t, e to the j omega t d omega. For this particular problem, we're working with the signal x of t equals the constant a. So if we plug this in, we have a equals 1 over 2 pi, and then this integral expression. And the question we have here is, what is x of omega? We don't know what that is, and we're trying to solve for it. And what we can do now, based on the problem we just worked, is we have a very good guess. We think that x of omega is going to be some type of frequency impulse, so an impulse in the frequency domain. So let's go ahead and guess and replace what we think x of omega might be. So here all I've done is rewritten that integral expression, 1 over 2 pi, the integral from minus infinity to infinity, and then I've replaced x of omega with a reasonable guess for what we think that might be. We know it's going to be some type of impulse, or guess that it's going to be some type of impulse. So that's why we have the delta of omega. And then the other constants there, 2 pi a, those are basically the constants we need to get this integral to work out. And you'll see how that works out here just here in a second. So here's the integral that we're starting with. Obviously, 2 pi and a are just constants, so I can pull those out of the integral. So I pull those out front. So now we have 2 pi a over 2 pi. And now the integral we have to work is the integral from minus infinity to infinity, delta of omega, e to the j omega t d omega. 
So again, this looks like a bad integral, but because of the impulse there, it's a very simple integral to work because we can use the sifting property again. Remember, the sifting property says if you're integrating over all whatever the axis is you're working with, here we're working with omega, so we're integrating over all omega minus infinity to infinity of some function times an impulse function. The function is e to the j omega t, so using the sifting property, I just have to evaluate e to the j omega t at the location of the impulse. Here, the location of the impulse is at omega equals zero, so I have to evaluate e to the j omega t at omega equals zero, so I get e to the zero, which is one. So this whole integral here by the sifting property is just equal to one, very similarly to how it was equal to one when we did this type of integral in sifting property in the time domain. So if that all collapses to one, we now have two pi a over two pi is one, the two pi's cancel, and we're left with a. So by doing this integral here, we've shown that when we select x of omega as two pi a delta of omega, the inverse Fourier transform integral equation gives us a, which is the time domain function that we wanted. So that checks out, and we now have another Fourier transform pair. In time, the constant a, x of t equals a, has a frequency domain representation, or Fourier transform, of 2 pi a delta of omega.